Welcome to New Life Live with host and founder of New Life Ministries, Stephen Arterburn. New Life Live is dedicated to transforming lives one at a time, thanks to the giving hearts of you, our listeners. Our goal is to provide you with wisdom from God's Word to give you hope and help in life's hardest places. If you have a question you'd like to ask today, our phone lines are open. Call 1-800-229-3000. That number again is 1-800-229-3000. Now here's Steve. Hi, thanks for joining us here on New Life Live. Uh, Dr. Alice Benton and myself are here. Hi, Alice. Hello. It is a Good Friday, and uh, it's always interesting to call the day that Jesus was put into the grave Good Friday. But I got to tell you, not much good would have ever happened mm -hmm. if he had not died on that cross gone into the grave, literally died, and then the power of the Holy Spirit, God himself raising him from the dead so that we could could be free of our sins. Now, this is a taped program uh, right now. Um, this is also the day that we are putting our good friend, Dr. Dave Stoop, to rest. And uh, in just a couple hours, I'll be doing the uh, graveside ceremony for or the service for his family. And then we will lower Dave into the grave, at least his body. But he is not there. He is in such a better place. And I am so uh, happy uh, that he is. But I want to tell you, Dave left quite um, a hole in this world and in my heart. And he had such an impact on so many people. We've just received so many cards from folks telling us what Dave uh, meant uh, to them. I received one of the most beautiful letters ever, a five-page handwritten letter Aww. from someone that just talked about the uh, healing impact that Dave uh, had on their life, and, and that person is not alone. So um, pray for the family, and uh, also let's truly um, celebrate the fact that Jesus, we had a God that sent his son that was willing to suffer, willingly suffer and die so that we could be free. That is not a small thing. And Lord, we are grateful for that. I'm going to uh, go right to the phones here and um, I'm going to talk with, how about we talk with Joyce from Seattle, Washington, and uh, she watches the program on YouTube. Hi, Joyce. How are you today? What's going on? Hello. Hi. Um, my name is Joyce, and I'm from India. I got married to an American eight years ago. We met mm. on a Christian dating site. So we both are Christians. We know the Lord, and we're saved and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, that's how our courting started, and we enjoy talking about uh, how when we are finally married, we would have Bible studies and raise our family and God's fear and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, he used to game sometimes when we were distant, right, two different countries, and he would promise to get on Skype to talk to me, but then he would forget and say sorry next day uh, because he was gaming and he just forgot the time. And I, it would lead to itty-bitty fights, but I was like, it's not a big problem, it's okay. Uh, and this is his third marriage, so he's been divorced twice. Um, I come to America and... Uh, uh, then I noticed the reality of his gaming, video game mm -hmm. playing addiction, and he would just bring like six, 12 packs of beer and just jug it, like playing games and ignore mm. me totally. Mm. And I'm from India. I have no family here and, mm. um, and the visa process and all that stuff. And that would lead to, I would ask him, you play hours on the game after work and then you come and ask me what's for dinner or... Uh, and I didn't, ha I didn't know how to drive either, so he would use that and manipulate me. Oh, you fought with me yesterday over my video game. Until you apologize, I will not take you here. Oh, boy. Or I will not take you to church. Go ask your friends and let them take you hmm. to church. So he would manipulate me like this. He would, uh, he some one time okay. take me out of the house, pack my All bags, right. and say, I've got go to go to a break. India. I have to go to a break, Joyce. So sorry to hear what you've been going through. We'll try to give you some help right after this. You're listening to New Life Live. We'll be back after this break. After I found the pornography on the internet, I said you either get help 
or I have to leave this household. Every day, thousands of women discover their husband is struggling with sexual integrity. And since shelter-in-place orders have gone into effect, traffic to porn sites has skyrocketed. New Life's Every Man's Battle Workshop can help. I believe that I could do it on my own. I just believe that if I tried hard enough and pulled myself up hard enough by my bootstraps, I could do it. It was a battle that I'd had all my life. I had to get help. The Every Man's Battle Workshop can be a trip to the sexual addiction emergency room. During this time of social distancing, the Every Man's Battle Workshop will be held online Saturday, April 10th. Find sexual integrity, accountability, and connection. Register now to reserve a place at the Every Man's Battle online workshop. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. The single most helpful thing was to realize that I wasn't the weirdest guy on the planet. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. 1-800-N-E-W-L-I-F-E. To find out more information about New Life or to order any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Now back to New Life Live. We're back talking with Joyce in a really sad uh, situation. So Joyce, um, your husband yeah. has no regard for you as a woman, is really a very sick man, I suspect, given what you're saying about the beer uh, I have to believe that he is an alcoholic as well as addicted uh, to gaming, which uh, they are both real oh. live addictions. Um, oh. Yeah, but, go ahead. But the fights that I put up and arguments that I put up, I said, this is enough. You have to stop drinking. It's ruining your health. We have two babies now. You cannot oh. go on. So he would frustratingly, he would stop drinking, and now he's picked up hard seltzer, which is still 5% alcohol. But yeah. again, there is this, like, it's not like just a glass okay. of wine kind well, of thing. Okay, or so just hold a can. on. It's Joyce, more like, Joyce, yeah. Yeah. hold on. So what you're saying is confirming that you're married to an alcoholic, first of all. Now, that is a physiological yeah. addiction, and stopping that addiction is not going to get us anywhere. What you're going to end up with oh. is a man uh, even more difficult to live with because he doesn't have his friend to kind of numb him out. What we want is a recovered oh. man who works some 12 steps that eventually end up making amends to his wife that he has been so cruel to. Stopping drinking doesn't help the, gam the gaming and it doesn't help him manipulating you and holding your visa and the, the, your driving and all that against you. Uh, we need to build some character into a man, and that's not going to happen until he deals but, with but, that. Yes, go ahead. Yeah. Go Sorry ahead. To interrupt, but I'm dealing with a man who doesn't want to go counseling, who yeah. doesn't need any pastoral uh, interference. Joyce, uh, Joyce. Uh, yeah, yeah. Do you think that you're the first wife ever married to a man who drank a lot of alcohol who didn't want to get help. Do you think you're the first one? Well, of course not. It is more common that the person would resist everything rather than get the help because they cannot imagine what life would be like without alcohol. So they'll quit the beer and they, like you say, they start the hard seltzer. So here's here's I, what um, here's yeah go ahead the root problem the root problem is his video game and every time in our eight years of marriage all our fights have been started from that and then okay. he, he says you have issues but you see, are angry here's your the thing. negative attitude okay. all right hold on a second though joyce i i don't know of meetings called gamers anonymous i bet they're there but i do know that he has an alcohol problem and it doesn't matter what started the problem. He has an alcohol problem. And if he would deal with that and recover from that, it would also help him recover from his dependency on gaming, his abuse of you, his neglect of his family. That's what we'd like to see. That's what happens when people recover. Alice, what are you thinking here? Joyce, we hear your tears and mm. you're desperate. You're alone I, in this country. I'm emotionally drained. Yes. Sure. I'm, oh, I'm yeah. emotionally drained. Yeah. And you I'm and you and and Joyce, Joyce, and you and you have two babies to be concerned about as well. 
But girl, I'm I'm worried for you that you're leading and leaning so heavily on his gaming problem. I'm glad Steve said the word abusive. You have an abusive husband who has been willing to kick you out of the house. My my concern is that as, as you Joyce, hold on, no, hold on, hold on, his... Joyce. I'm sorry right. that yeah. Go we ahead. we want to help you, but you got to hold on and let us help you. All right. So. If you keep leading with the gaming and you keep putting all the weight of the problem on that, I think you're missing the true danger level in your home and in your relationship that your husband was willing to kick you out of the house, that he's willing to restrict you in these ways that's dangerous for you and for the kids. Now, I think, I think you're taking the wrong tact on this by telling him he has to stop and by going after the argument about the gaming. That's not working for you. It's not helping. You're going to need to shift your perspective into, this is what I need you to do, husband. I need you to get sober. I need you to get help. And, and you already know he won't. He's already rejected it. But then you follow up with, and if you won't do that, then I have to take steps to protect myself and protect our, our children and our household. Now, you're probably thinking that's impossible for you to do because you're not connected with other women who've been where you are and you're not connected with a good Christian counselor who can direct you. The reason we know that is that you have this need to say all of this stuff. We're with you. We hate what you're going through. We got it about two minutes into this thing of how bad this is. So here's what I'm suggesting. I'm going to send you uh, this little book that we have, Understanding and Loving a Person with Chemical Dependency Problem. Dave Stoop wrote that. And then I'm going to ask you to hold on. I want to find a counselor for you. And then you're going to have to find a way for your child to be taken care of so you can go to Al-Anon. You need to be in Al-Anon. And some of the groups have child care along with them. And so that would be great, too. But we've got to get serious about the alcohol. The gaming, as, as Alice said, it doesn't get you anywhere. But... I'll guarantee you this, this man is addicted to alcohol. You can't drink, you know, all these six packs of beer that he's got there. You can't do that without getting addicted to it. So that's where I would focus, uh, and I would, and you really need some help outside of just your hard work and intentions. I am very, very, uh, very sorry for what you're going through. But I think if you'll get an Al-Anon, if you'll start to deal with some other folks, uh, that have been where you are, Christian counselor, female, I think you're going to be really, really happy about what, what goes on from there. All right, 1-800-NEW-LIFE. If you need some help, we want to help you. Alice, do you have a final comment there? When we're dealing with an addicted family member, it's always worthwhile to ask them outside of an argumentative period, What's stressing you out? What's bothering you? Is there anything that's making you anxious? Because there's a reason they're going to comfort with gaming yeah. and with substance use. So that's a that's valuable right. question to ask. Yeah, good point. All right, let's uh, talk with Alicia. Uh, Joyce was from India. Alicia is from Indio, California. Alicia, how are you today? What's going on? Hi, I'm good. Um, I was just listening a couple days ago and I heard a girl named Jessica talk about her husband had some porn issues and some, and she was giving an ultimatum of either yeah. getting a divorce or going to counseling. Yeah. Um, and my husband had the same issues about six years ago and we found celebrate recovery mm -hmm. through our church. It's a Christ centered based recovery. Yeah. Um, and it's saved our life. It's changed everything the way we do our relationship with God. It's, it's been amazing. And what what led to so, him deciding to go? I mean, that's just fantastic. That's really, you know, that we were just talking here. Uh, uh, that would be the answer for him. So well, how did you or what happened that caused him to go or want to be part of it? Well, we were we were dating at the time, and um, I came home from college, and I found him passed out drunk looking at some really dark side oh. of porn. And I was like, mm. what? what the heck is this? So... Um, I told him, you either get help or I can't be in this relationship. And so he started calling around and 
every therapist he called, you know, was busy, couldn't help him. So I said, call my therapist. So finally he called my therapist and she said, I know somebody. I have a friend who can help you. Hmm. And she led him to um, Randy Boyd out here in the desert, and he's big in Celebrate Recovery. He was the ministry lead, and he walked with my husband. Great. He held his hand. He put him under his wing and just walked with him and, you know, didn't tell him he had to do anything. Just said, hey, I'm here for you. Yeah. Well, one thing that and, I think uh, I hope people are hearing is you did this, see, before you got yes. married and and so often right. we see the you see the stuff and you think it's going to get better it's not just men that do this uh, i mean not just women men do it too they they really this is not going to be good but they think it's going to get better and then it doesn't but you took action before the marriage and that that has a lot to do with the outcome you had there right yes it definitely did and yeah. you know and um now we were married and we have we had another i had two children before this um and that we had another child and then we got pregnant again and had identical twin boys so <laughs> awesome. god has been good to us <laughs> good that's great well thank you for encouraging a woman to do the tough thing that is very very hard to do and uh, i'm going to send you a life recovery bible i hope you'll like that that is the original bible at celebrate recovery used many many years years ago let's go to zima memphis tennessee hi how are you today what's going on hi i i don't know what to do i've been in this marriage relationship for about 50 years 25 years ago i committed adultery i asked for forgiveness and god forgave me i asked my husband and he said he's forgiven me, but every so often he brings this painful thing up mm. and degrades me, and and then he wants to be intimate with me. Mm. And I said, that is sick. I cannot do that. And he said he loves me. He never holds me, tells me he loves me. He never pulls me close. He never says anything good about me. And yet he says he loves me. And I just, I want to leave. And then I don't, I don't know what, I want to do what is right. Yeah. That God's blessing will be in my life. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what to do. Okay. I'm glad you I, called. That's so, so hard. And we hear a lot of calls like this when the you know when a, a man is unfaithful it is more likely that the woman will forgive and part of that forgiveness is the agreement if we're between them and god and, and the other person i'm just not going to bring this up again but it's it's harder for men or they for whatever reason they don't and and i think he, he does love you. He's still hurting because he's never fully grieved what he lost when that happened so many years ago. So, Alice, if, um, if she was coming to you to talk to you in your practice, what would be your direction here for her? Very, very painful situation. Zima, I hear your desperation. This is very painful to be in this dance with your husband. And I greatly respect your yeah. humility in leading in this conversation with your sin and that you've already made those forgiveness mm -hmm. steps with your husband and with God. And, and you know, yeah. requesting forgiveness for this kind of betrayal and injury that you caused to your husband, just forgiveness alone is not enough. Did you also get help for you and for your husband and the way you hurt him? He refused to go to to counseling and said, I'm the one with a problem and that it should be me. He has no problem. The problem he has is the pain he's carrying. And although he may have said he forgave you, and maybe he truly, he thought he was, he is carrying, I believe, a great deal of resentment towards you still and hurt. It probably hurt him yeah. more than he realized at the time. 
And because you were the perpetrator of the infidelity, he was kind of right. You had the majority of the problem. But I think it's your husband's pain that comes out in the degrading behavior. And it doesn't justify it. It's not right that he's treating you in that way. But Zima, what you probably will need to do is rather than waiting for the next time he brings it up and it's unexpected and it's hurtful, I think you need to bring to him. You think what you did to him is still hurting and that he probably needs to talk with you about it. And you invite him, Zima, tell me what you've been thinking. Tell me what you've been feeling about how what I did hurt you. He needs to be able to talk about it in a healthy way. And giving that invitation may lower some of that offensive um, approach that he's taking towards you. It's certainly worth, it's a grace-filled, merciful attempt to reach out to him. Yeah, I think that's uh, so good. So often, you know, a guy says, I forgive you. He wants to forgive. And he just never, ever gets beyond it. And and he hasn't done the grief work that's needed. And, and he was wrong that it's your problem. We'll talk about why that's wrong. We'll be after that. I feel blessed to have had this opportunity for my needs to be met, connecting with other women who are fighting the same fight, hoping for healthy marriages and growing closer to the Lord on their journey. My name is Shelly Martinkus, and I want to personally invite you to the Restore Workshop. If you have been affected by betrayal, it might be that your husband has been looking at pornography, it might be an emotional, a physical affair. I would love for you to come join us. I feel encouraged and hopeful that even in my struggle, I am enough. You will leave with hope, with a community of sisters ready to support you, and you will also leave with tools to move you forward on this journey. Through the sharing in our small group, I realize that I am not alone. Please don't hesitate. Pick up the phone, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. I would love to see you there. The Restore Workshop is coming to Dallas, Texas, June 25th through the 27th. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE to find out more. That's 1-800-639-5433 or online at newlife.com. I was really living a very anxiety-filled life. I turned on New Life and the topic that day was about anxiety. And just by listening, I got relief. You can help New Life Live stay on the air by joining Club New Life today. When you sign up to support us monthly through Club New Life, we'll send you the new member thank you gift of seven books, including Growth Has No Boundaries by Drs. John Townsend and Henry Cloud, Take Your Life Back by Steve Arterburn and Dr. Dave Stoop, and the Emotional Freedom Workbook. Plus, there are ongoing benefits like access to the Club New Life video library, the monthly Club New Life CD or download, quarterly resources, free shipping on purchased resources, and discounts on workshops. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433. Support Club New Life, and together we can help hurting people find help and hope in life's hardest places. Call 1-800-639-5433 to join Club New Life today. We'd love to hear from you. If you have a question or a comment, call toll-free 1-800-229-3000. Now back to New Life Live. We're back. And uh, before we talk with Zelma, I, uh, Alice asked me a question about uh, at the break here, and I want to answer that. And the question was, should part of that forgiveness uh, be an agreement that you would never uh, bring this up again? Well, I think that... It's more a spirit of, I'm never going to throw this in your face again. And I'm not going to bring it up unless I get triggered for some reason. Uh, Let's say that the betrayal occurred uh, in a hotel. And this, your your spouse was going to go have breakfast at that hotel with a friend, not even thinking about the other thing. But it bothered you. Well, then you're going to need to bring it up. And say, you know what, that's where that thing happened. I just would really appreciate if you guys would go to breakfast somewhere else. Uh, So it isn't like you'd never, ever bring it up. But there'd be a reason that you'd have to bring it up. It'd be the last thing that you do. Now, here's the other thing. And I'm talking about this man. If he would go through the grieving process, he could let go of whatever idealistic hopes and dreams he had. And he was entitled to those hopes and dreams. He could let go of those. And then he could embrace the reality that he has. But when, I'm, when I met with the women at Restore, 
I said to them, I, I so feel for what you're going through because I've been there. I was betrayed like you. And here's the problem. Your spouse had a problem and your spouse needs to deal with it. And you have no control over that. Some of you, your spouse is working hard to deal with it. Others, not so. But when that happened, you were given a problem. You didn't ask for that problem, but you were given the problem. And it's twofold. The pain and humiliation of being betrayed, vows broken, dreams shattered. And then secondly, the problem of needing to forgive. Not because it's going to help the other person. It's going to help you to not live with pain, suffering, all that stuff that you're going to live with until you fully forgive. So he does have a problem. And you gave him that problem. And it wasn't fair. But life is not fair. And he simply is going to be miserable and make you miserable until he deals with that problem, the problem of forgiving something that many would say is unforgivable. But it isn't unforgivable. Many people have gone on to have a better relationship once the affair was acknowledged and both people went to work doing whatever they needed to do. Alice, what else uh, do we need to say here? Well, Steve, in, in Healing is a Choice, you give the, the description that unhealed trauma and ungrieved pain, it's like a vulture that's just always there. Yeah. It's so obvious. It's so heavy. It's so ugly. But when we go through the grief process you're describing, it becomes more like a mosquito that shows up. Sometimes we yeah. can swat it away, and, right. and we're much stronger. We have, we've taken authority over that problem, and it no longer has authority over us, and that can happen for this couple. Yeah, but I I think um, you know you're you're gonna have to um, do some work yourself. Kind of like you'll have to lead the restoration process by going in and and doing some additional work yourself. Even though it, it you know you may have done a lot of work over this. Now as we're saying these things, what what is it that that you're thinking? as we share all this stuff. I want to help him to get past this mm -hmm. so that we can have a good life. We are old now, and I long for us to be together. And I truly am so sorry for what happened, and there's no excuse for it. And he keeps saying, why, why, why did you do it? Wow. All and these not, years not later. Yes. And, and you, you were low, low, low. Just, oh, just so many things he said that's so painful and hurtful. Mm. There is no excuse for it. But no. I was so lonely. He's not an affectionate person. And... I need companionship, but there is no, I'm not excusing what I did. No, it, you know what, though? It does, it does sound like an excuse. And I got to call you on that because oh. when you say, but I was so okay. lonely, but he wasn't affectionate. And when you say, I am sorry for what happened, that is not the strongest, yeah. healthiest approach for you to take to truly show him the sincerity, which I believe is there. So instead, it's, I'm yeah. sorry for what I did, not what happened. And it's, there was no excuse for me choosing to step outside yeah. of our marriage. It's that kind of strength and complete responsibility taking that I don't think your husband has heard enough of from you. He needs more of that from you. See, I would want you to reach this very difficult awareness that he didn't do anything to contribute to your affair. He contributed to a horrifically unaffectionate, lonely marriage but your decision to go outside of the the marriage that was all you and i think the more yeah. he could have heard you say that was all me that wasn't that wasn't because you were mean or whatever um i didn't yeah. make the choice to get in a support group of other women who are married to sick men or unaffectionate men that was your choice and if he could hear that versus an explanation, well, I was lonely and all of this, you're still explaining it away. 
He okay. is still wondering why. You did not have an affair because he was not affectionate. You had an affair. No. Because you didn't protect yourself in such a horrible situation. And who could blame you? my life I've been dealing with an opiate addiction. Why is opioid addiction quickly becoming one of our nation's biggest killers? Maybe it's because it isn't only those who are addicted who are in denial. We did what I see so many parents do, is it can't be an addiction. There's something medically wrong. It's impossible to solve a problem when you don't know what you're up against, and families will try to find any explanation except the one that will put them on the right path. Alcoholism and drug addiction is a family disease. It doesn't affect just the individual. If someone you love is abusing painkillers, know what you're up against. It's time to admit it's addiction and seek treatment. Call us today at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. We have partner treatment centers around the country. Call 1-800-639-5433 or visit us online at newlife.com. We just made a decision. We will do whatever it takes. 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Hi, this is Steve Arterburn, and for 30 years, New Life has been the most trusted name in Christian counseling. I'm an addict, and I'm trying to get God in my life again. You seem to be able to get to the crux of a problem quickly. Our Christ-centered treatment programs can help you break free to embrace all that God has for you and your family. I just want to thank you guys for bringing me to a relationship with Jesus. There really is help for marital problems, depression, addictions, panic attacks, and feelings of hopelessness. I came back with so many tools to help me prepare myself to fight this struggle and this battle that I have every day. You can start living again today. Living the life God intended for you. Help is available at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. They did care and they did follow up very lovingly and it made all the difference in my life. Call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Someone who cares is waiting at the other end of the phone. God can open the door to a better tomorrow right now. Just call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. 1-800-639-5433. glad you joined us for New Life Live. To be a part of the program, call 1-800-229-3000. Now back to New Life Live. We're back. Steve Arterburn here and uh, joining us in the studio right now, Larry Sonnenberg is here. Larry, it's April 2nd, Good Friday. Uh, what, what good do you have for us here today on New Life? Well, you know, I was, Steve, I was thinking about uh, our devotion on Wednesday. Yeah. Um, Anna Vaught did it. Anna's the head of our uh, counselor network. Yes. And she talked about being on mission and how Christ stayed on mission, mm -hmm. you know, all the way through to his death and how he knew what was going to happen and he stayed on mission anyway. Mm -hmm. And I just got to thinking about that a little bit. And, um, you know, whether he was teaching, performing miracles, challenging Pharisees, uh, whether he was being on trial, whipped, scourged, crucified, he stuck it through. He was on mission. And, you know, this Good Friday at New Life, uh, rather than doing a testimony, my, I just want to encourage our audience to, uh, in asking for your financial support and partnership, to, to remember and to be grateful for Christ and his mission mm -hmm. and to consider what he has for you in terms of your personal mission. At New Life, our mission is to transform lives by compassionately communicating God's truth and uh, connecting people into redemptive relationships. God has honored and blessed New Life now. We're in our 33rd year here. And we're on mission, and passionately so. So I, I just want to ask folks on this Good Friday as we're approaching Easter, which is such a day of celebration, uh, to partner with us financially and continue the blessing you know this ministry has been blessed beyond what we can think or imagine and uh it, it we can continue that blessing if you support new life well i want to say this larry i really believe uh, with all my heart that some people have been blessed financially and their god appointed mission is to uh, support ministries you know there's a great story of the guy that owned the pizza company that uh decided to get out of the pizza business and go be a missionary. Mm -hmm. And then he goes to be a missionary, finds out he's the worst missionary that's ever been a missionary. <laughs> and, he, and he realizes 
My calling isn't to be a missionary. It's to go make money selling pizza so I can support missionaries. And that is the mission of some people. Uh, But here's the other thing. A lot of folks aren't on mission because there's something standing in the way of it. It's fear or doubt or, or something. And we could help you deal with whatever the roadblock is that's in between you and and really going to bed at night saying, man, I did it today. I was on mission. That's what we would want for you. So if you don't really feel like you have a mission or you're on mission, we could help you with that. Anything else you want to add, Larry? I'm just thinking that people live life and they just, they're just going through it without even thinking about mission. And just can't help but encourage you to think about that. That Christ has you here for a reason. And your mission it could be so many different things, but it is a mission. And you will exhibit and be Christ to other people if you are on mission, no matter whether you're selling pizza or being a missionary. And uh, we just thank you for partnering with us in the process. Absolutely. And, All and right. God's yeah, incredible ahead. design is that when we join the mission and when we give, when we step beyond the fear of, I don't think I have enough to give, I only have this little bit. He multiplies it. He, he does. He multiplies the blessings. He multiplies the grace. And so you will benefit in giving. And, and he empowers it. He empowers the mission. That's the beautiful thing. The same power that God used to raise Christ from the dead is available to us today. That is right. So, and as you mentioned, Larry, we're uh, we're in our thirty third year. We're not going anywhere. Right. So uh, we we want you to help us do what we're doing, and we love getting to do it. It's all about transformation. Thank you, Larry. Alrighty. Appreciate that. All right, we are going to go all the way to Brighton, Michigan, W S N L, and that is Ann calling us there. And you are on with Alice Benton and Steve Arterburn. How you doing? Yeah, well, I'm learning a lot. I'm taking notes. <laughs> uh, you helped me with my huh. with my daughter last week. Mm. Okay. And so now I'm asking uh, the healthy decision with my husband, which is okay. a big part of why I worry about my kids. Okay. Um, we have a large family, and my husband was in a silent heart attack in December and uh, almost uh, in a car accident. He could have been killed. Mm. And he, for the first time, acknowledged his um, double life and everything that he had had in the sense that his mistreatment of the marriage and of his wife, me, Mm. for the first time. Mm -hmm. And he also wanted, wrote a very moving e-letter to all the kids and showed them to me and said, I want to come back and I want to do it right this time. We've been married 45 years. My children said to me, Mom... It kind of validated me in their eyes because they always thought I had to be doing a lot to cause dad's problems. But for the first time, they started to think, oh, maybe mom's mom's is is handling things right. Mm -hmm. And they overjoyed that he was wanting to be better. And they said, mom, he's turning the corner. This is a resurrection. And they were so happy. And I was uh, very I held I was. I had trepidation. I did it mm-hmm. been so many things, but I, uh, with great angst, agreed that he could come back because once he was out with the month of recovery, I knew I couldn't go back to the way things were. And I said, unless you do a treatment, the work a program, I cannot have you come back. And he said, I will. So he started counseling, and then he also said he was going to do a twelve step. Uh, He got back, and after two sessions, quit the counseling. Mm. Then the disrespect started to seep in, and he's 75 to 80 percent back to what he always was. Uh, So I went up yesterday and said, you cannot live here and go backwards. You've got to go forward. And I pressed him and said, you can't live here. You need to move out if you're not going to work the program. And he got angry and said, I'll never work the program. And he's out and he's signing an apartment. And I'm wanting to know if I did the right thing. I'm wanting to know if I should stick now with this and move on. With, um, yeah, I, you, know, you know what I would do? Just, and I would, um, I'd send an email, letter, uh, something to the kids and tell them, uh, I want you to know. I don't want you to be confused about what happened. Uh, you used to... Um, think that I was hard on dad and that's why I had all these problems 
but um, I think you understood when the accident occurred that he had some really big problems. And at the time, I agreed to let him come back because he was motivated to change, get involved in stuff. And uh, he has just told me that he is not willing to do that anymore. Things have gotten worse. They're really kind of back where they were. And now he's going to live in an apartment by himself and do whatever he wants to do. I just wanted you to know from me, I love him. Uh, I am always here once he decides to get some help. And he can't just move back in by getting a little help. He needs to get the help, and then we can talk about uh, resuming this relationship. But I just wanted you to know. That'd be the one thing that I would do. I would be sure your kids aren't going to hear this from him uh, and, and get a distorted view of this because you've been very, very patient. I want to say one more thing. I'm going to turn it over to Alice. If anybody else gets in this situation, before you let somebody come back like this, you need to have a what if clause. You need to say, okay, so you're motivated. You're going to go to the program, going to get involved in 12 step, and, and we're going to really make this work. I'm so glad you're not just saying, let me come back, but you're working. But we need to have in writing, what if you quit going to group? Or what if I can give you three instances of you being disrespectful and abusive to me? What are you willing to do now? What will you commit now that you're going to do then? And so things go bad, and you pull out that what if clause, and many times the person that would normally not do anything, they will because they agreed to it beforehand. And you're also they're hearing you be realistic they're hearing that you don't think that everything is just magically and wonderfully going to be okay there is a chance that this could not could not go well alice what are your thoughts here and why i did that by the way i had oh, that good. written down by the way good i'm glad and he still didn't respond to it though why do you doubt well, uh, why do you he did he moved out mm -hmm. yeah okay why do you doubt that you uh, whether or not you made the right decision this time well, I learned a lot from the call of the previous program where you said sometimes the healthy one can become uh, prideful and arrogant. You and, you and Steve both made that. I thought, whoa, I've got to pray about that. Uh, because <laughs> And dig in your heels and say, I am right. And I thought, did I do that when I went upstairs and said that? Because I've asked, I asked him to move upstairs years ago when I, with everything, when he hadn't been sorry and was cocky about his life. He had to live upstairs, but he was in the home for the children's sake. Um, I wanted to know, did I do what you warned not a healthy spouse not to do? Did I press well, him? Okay. Uh, so hold on. You hear the music. We'll go to a break, and then when we come back, we will we'll just look at that. And I appreciate you being willing to stop and say, wait a minute. Um, was I uh, kind of off track here a little bit? I feel blessed to have had this opportunity for my needs to be met, connecting with other women who are fighting the same fight, hoping for healthy marriages and growing closer to the Lord on their journey. My name is Shelly Martinkus and I want to personally invite you to the Restore Workshop. If you have been affected by betrayal, it might be that your husband has been looking at pornography, it might be an emotional, a physical affair. I would love for you to come join us. I feel encouraged and hopeful that even in my struggle, I am enough. You will leave with hope, with a community of sisters ready to support you, and you will also leave with tools to move you forward on this journey. Through the sharing in our small group, I realize that I am not alone. Please don't hesitate. Pick up the phone, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. I would love to see you there. The Restore Workshop is coming to Dallas, Texas, June 25th through the 27th. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE to find out more. That's 1-800-639-5433 or online at newlife.com. Hi, this is Steve Arterburn, and for 30 years, New Life has been the most trusted name in Christian counseling. Your ministry has saved my life. If you struggle with emotional hurt, family or marriage problems, the pit of depression, or the pain of addictions, we can help. I'm down 100 pounds now from what I was. You guys are awesome. You are a blessing to America. <laughs> Our treatment programs provide clinically appropriate solutions from licensed professionals. 
all in a biblical framework. I have had problems with alcohol. I think God has ordained this place to be His. You don't have to be a prisoner of your pain. Help is available at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. She tells me that I'm a new man and I feel like a new man. It worked for me and it can work for them too. This time it is different. If you're ready to take the first step toward genuine spiritual and emotional healing, please call us today at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. God can open the door to a better tomorrow right now. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433. To find out more information about New Life or to order any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Now back to New Life Live. We're back. Steve Artiburn here. We're talking with Ann. Really tough situation. She uh, asked her husband, who went back on his word, leave because you're not doing the work. He said he never would. Alice, what what are you thinking uh, through all of this? And I was shaking my head over the break, very angry for your sake and upset with your husband at what he's missing out on, that you're a woman willing to question, am I doing the right thing? Should I have adjusted this a little bit? You're checking yourself when all all arrows point to your husband oh what he is losing such a precious spouse with his behavior his choices are leading to him being kicked out of the house much more so than than your stance or your decision it's his behavior and it's just rotten that he is choosing that over you i feel a sorrow too for all the good that could come that is that might not that's why i want to still hope that um, he could wake up again a second time and choose something that's healthy for the kids, for the family. Yeah. So a here's, a, here's something. Too here, much of. Okay, so when you were questioning um, your reaction, you know, and you went, well, I wonder if I went too far or whatever. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, did it become a situation where just it was – all criticism, all separation, all negative, and um, or, or how do you think you handled all that? Well, I always wish I had a tape recorder so I could take it to a to a mentor and say, "Okay, what did I say right? What did I say wrong?" <laughs> yeah, don't um, we all? Yeah, that'd be great. Uh, I, I well, my husband used to secretly tape me, and I'd say, "Thank you, thank you. I want to know." <laughs> but anyway, yeah. I walked up the stairs and I said, uh, "You know." Uh, the disrespect is coming back. You're seventy five cent percent back. I said, mm-hmm. uh, "Why not try the counseling again?" He said, "I will never do the counseling again." He said, "It doesn't help me." And I said, "Why not do the twelve step? I'll never go there again." And I said, "Then you can't stay here and keep digressing because you won't get yeah. better if you don't work a program." And I was angry, and he was angry, and he started yelling, and he said, "I'm out of here. I'm sat in an apartment. I'm getting out." And that's what I wondered. Did I? Did I choose the wrong time? Did I press him where I should have done it in a um, more, a less stressful way? He, he was, I he was never going to blow up. And he was never going to receive this well because right. he has slipped back into his sin patterns. And so he's, he's in, in an aggressive mode. He's not at all in a receptive mode. And so I want you to know, I think your decision was good and right, although it's tragic, because your husband has not yet hit his bottom, which is incredible, given that he was facing death. And that, that woke him up for a little while, but it wasn't enough. And so he has to lose yeah. more before he's motivated enough to try again. And so losing the right to access to you and losing his place in the home is right because it may allow him to feel sufficient pain to change. In fact, you might need to take it farther. Given how untrustworthy he's been, you might have to consider even financially and legally protecting yourself. I'd ask you to talk with a lawyer and and look at the options that you have, not not necessarily for a divorce yet, but to look at protecting no. yourself. Yeah, and you know Legal. he used a he used a word um, that you know when when a guy uses this word, you have to take him at his word, and he used the word never. And you know when somebody says never versus well, I'm just not willing to do that right now or whatever. That that's a, a stance that is um, it's a different stance than a lot of people take. So I do think you did the uh, the right thing. You said you had the agreement that we talked about, and then he 
blew it, and you've asked him to follow through on that agreement and leave. The, the other thing that would have happened is you would have enabled him to believe it was okay to stay the way he was. Yes. Or that time was going to make it better, and time wasn't going to make it better. So I applaud your strength under the pressure, and uh, I'm, I'm really glad that you aren't one of those people that just you know, say, well, I'm waiting on the Lord, but what you're really do is, you're doing is just wishing that it would all go away. It's nothing more than wishing rather than real life hope. All right, so um, I'm really glad that you called, and I, I don't know if you... Uh, have this book, but I'm going to send Take Your Life Back and, and the workbook there. I think it could be a really big help because a lot of people's lives get stolen by the other person or the problem that the other person possesses, and you can take that back. Steve, I, I think there's a minimum time that we should wait and see once we hear words of repentance, but we haven't yet seen enough behavior. Because anybody can white knuckle it for a couple of weeks and look it's good true. again. I think a minimum of six months showing consistent effort and participation in structured programs and allowing feedback to come from group leaders and from therapists to the spouse that has been perpetrated against, six months minimum until you make a decision of should they come back into the house or not. Yeah, I mean, how would you know, if you don't do that, whether or not they're just going to go to meetings until they get back in the house? You know, you don't know that for sure. And so to give it, a little bit of of time there would really be a wise thing and see what's going to happen whenever uh, somebody needs some help you know we have this thing called life recovery life recovery bible three million bibles out there and there are life recovery groups in the bible there is a way a simple way to start a group and to run a group that's available to you and then you get the support that you need. And I just hope and pray that if you need help, if you need support, that you'll look at a support group like a life recovery group. Or maybe, maybe that's not the way to go. Maybe it's a, a therapist, a counselor, a Christian counselor. We've got that for you. Or maybe it's one of our intensives. But i got to tell you, if you're listening to this program for a long time and you've got a husband who's dealing with sexual integrity problems, I don't understand why you haven't said to him, you have to go to every man's battle. I mean, so many guys have gotten such amazing help for, from every man's battle. I just, just please, I'm just telling you, tell him to go. You, and if you don't know how to tell him to go, make the call yourself and we'll tell you uh, how to tell him what will be the best strategy for you. And that number is 1-800-NEW-LIFE. As we close out the program, it is Good Friday. And you know, many of us are living in a Friday kind of world where it's, it's hopeless. There's despair. Uh, it's like everything we thought was going to happen. Like those disciples thought he was going to have his own kingdom here on earth and all sorts of uh, strange things that they thought would happen, even though they were with him all of that time. And then he ends up dead and in the grave. He had told them what was going to happen, but, you know, they, they really, really had a hard time understanding what he was saying. Many of us, we don't know what God's doing. We've had a loss. We've, um, we've made mistakes. And it, and it feels like a big, horrible, dark Friday of death. Well, you know, one of the great preachers did this great sermon who said it's Friday, but Sunday's coming. And that really is the truth. We're going to celebrate Easter, but it's true in your own life, too, if you accept Christ as your Savior. You will have a great Sunday resurrection if you'll follow the path that God has for you. That path means accepting His forgiveness for your sins through his son Jesus, but also giving that same grace and mercy to others. Not for their sake, but for yours. Thanks for uh, watching, listening, being with us. Thank you, Dr. Alice Benton. Appreciate you. Thanks to all of you out there. Have a great, great weekend, a wonderful Resurrection Easter. 
We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening. We hope this program has helped you by giving you insights for handling the challenges you face in your life. We want you to know that we're here for you, but you also need to know that New Life Live is a listener-supported ministry. To make your donation or to get any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433 or write to us at New Life Ministries, P.O. Box 1029, Lake Forest, California, 92609. Please join us again tomorrow for New Life Live. Hi, thank you for watching New Life Live. You know, New Life Live is a Christian counseling program where we deal with the hard questions about life, relationships, kids, free choice, freedom of will, whatever. It's all right there on New Life Live every day, every weekday, 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific. If you want to call into the live broadcast, you can find the schedule on newlife.com or click the social media link right below. You can see every episode of New Life Live on the New Life YouTube channel. Watch it with a friend, watch it later. Be sure to subscribe and hit that bell so you'll never miss another episode. So if you want to listen on the go, download the app. The link is right below. And I hope if you need some information, if you want to get some help, you'll call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. And I'll see you next time.